Hey, I'm a clean stop cuss. Oh, see? That's what yeah, I think. Yeah, you gotta kinda work it out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Dance it, man. Dance it. Hey, welcome to Shape with Srini. This is not a build video. In this video, I'm going to show you the buying experience of Flyweight Slabs. I got these slabs from Clean Slab Customs. They are based in Selena, Texas. They not only sell slabs, but they do also offer other services, which you're going to see in the video. I'm going to make a king size headboard using these slabs. That build video will be coming in near future. I hope my buying experience video will help you if you are buying any Liveage slabs. Hey, uh, I'm at uh, Clean Slab Customs and with Garrett. So he's going to show his shop and tell us about all the services he's offering. Hey, I'm Garrett with Clean Slab Customs. Um, so we have an iDry vacuum kiln over here, which is the mainstay of the shop. Um, we do offer kiln drying services. Don't mind the mess. It's pretty, uh, pretty nuts in here. Um, so I can dry pretty much whatever thickness, whatever size, up to 13 foot uh, long and 60 inches in width. Um, it takes your drying from months or years to about weeks or days sometimes. So hit me up if you guys need anything from there. I also do offer sawmill services. Um, so I can sawmill up to 27 inches on this big guy, little guy actually, and then the big guy I can do 60 inches when it's working. Um, and then I also offer slabs for sale and do custom furniture as well. So I'm kind of all over the place, but this is what I got going on. So what kind of wood do you normally sell? Uh, typically I only sell domestic hardwood, uh, occasionally cedar, that kind of stuff, but yeah, try to stick with the hardwood. Um, I've got right now ash. A mixture of a bunch of stuff. I got walnut over here, some willow at the end, pecan, uh, hackberry. I get a lot of hackberry. Everything basically that grows locally to this area because I tend to try to salvage logs versus buying them. Um, I do occasionally buy some stuff from Oklahoma, but I try to stick with in the area. So like all the walnut that I have currently is from Anna, Texas, down the street from here. Um, and we're in Solana right now. So... And do you also do like some custom builds for customers? Absolutely. So right now, these two pecans actually right here are going to turn into an 11-foot bar top. I'm doing a little table over here for my aunt. Um, I do a lot of cutting boards, epoxy charcuterie boards, uh, pretty much whatever you can think of. I do like epoxy, even though some people hate it. A lot of the old-timers tell me that it's no good, but I'm a big fan. It makes it so that I can use the, the wood that's salvaged versus having to buy the really nice, pretty logs. I can use the stuff that has funky shapes, holes in it, stuff that would normally go to a burn pile. So that's kind of... So if somebody uh, gets a log, will you cut like uh, uh, slabs on the sawmill for them? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I do, I will 100% cut someone else's logs if they want to bring them to me. If I have to go pick them up, it does cost some money. But typically, if you can bring it to me, I can either have myself mill it or one of my buddies uh, that will mill for me when I don't have the chance to. Uh, but I also will custom sawmill my personal logs as well. Are you comfortable sharing like how much you charge? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So on this sawmill right here, I'm at $125 an hour. Typically, so like a log that's currently on here, I don't mind the plywood, but this log right here is about 16 inches in diameter and it's about 11 foot long. This one will take me about 30 minutes to do typically. Now, if somebody wants dimensional lumber, so where there's no, no live edge whatsoever, that is a little more expensive because it takes longer to do it. You have to flip the log constantly. So any custom, like I need one by sixes and one by eights, one by fours. You have a lot of those kinds of things. It will take longer. But if it's just, I wanted the log slabbed into actual live edge slabs, just run it down the sawmill basically. Then it's about 30 minutes to 45 minutes per log to do. Um, so I can try to, usually, usually I can knock out, especially cedar or something softer, I can knock out two logs in an hour. Um, so that's that price on that one. And then the big sawmill is 250 an hour, and it can do up to 60 inches wide by 25 inch, 25 feet long. Um, so can do, do a lot more on it and potentially put two logs next to each other as well. So that's kind of the reason I have to charge a little more. Plus you get a lot more board footage for every single cut. So um, For anybody who watches this video, right, if they want to contact you, what's the best way? Um, phone number 214-551-5518 or you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, um, and, or email if you want to get my email address, I can give that out too. Um, but yeah, pretty much any way you can think of and as far as payment methods, take everything. So don't worry about bringing cash, I can pretty much accept anything you got. Um, I prefer to stick with the lab edge slab stuff as much as I possibly can, but I definitely do two-dimensional lumber a little, a little bit more now.
So do you want to sell these? The roots and things. Yeah. So that's actually my buddies over at uh, De Devin over at Cedar and Steel. He's going to have me cut that into cookies for him so he can pour it into epoxy mold. Um, I don't get a whole lot of root bases, but I have a few guys that do. Uh, Sean Fulton over at the Nuthouse Sawmills in Telephone, Texas. He gets a ton of root bases that he actually salvages from the river that's right next to his property. And then if you also need slab flattening services, hit up Devin with Cedar and Steel over Van Alstine because he's a great guy and he's got awesome, cool burls and things that he also messes with and does a lot of epoxy tables, that kind of stuff too. So, Can you explain a little bit about like the book match pieces? You yeah, for sure. So different people call different things book match slabs. So this is actually the one that Serena over here is getting. It's these two. Set them a little unevenly. So basically when you take a log, imagine it's a circle. You cut it right here and you take the next cut and you flip it open. Act like it's a book. You're actually opening up a book. So these two were once together like this. Now they're open here. I personally did this cut so that they're joined. Also because I had to to get to fill in the mill. But so now they can actually be joined right there. And all you have now is an opening here for epoxy or whatever. Or you can leave it open or do giant bow ties. Whatever you want to do. Um, it's really just the way that the, the actual log is sawn. So some people also call book matching where you take the log and cut it. Almost, you cut the center of it out because you typically want the pith gone of the center, the center of the of the heartwood. Uh, you want that stuff gone. It's usually the worst wood. So what they'll do is they'll actually take one side of either side of the pith, and those will be their book match. So it's, in reality, that particular book match is basically just a slab minus a section. So it's kind of like it's just making one full slab while getting rid of all the wood that doesn't work well. But my particular set of book matches that I like is this kind of thing where it's literally like you're opening up a book and seeing both sides. Uh, so these are the book match pieces I'm getting from Garrett, the Clean Slab Customs. So my idea is uh, to clean this up and make a headboard. It's for the king size. And what's the best way to clean this up? Like using like any of the angle grinder with the sander? So it depends. So some people actually like to be able to see all of this so on some of the... the I do a lot of charcuterie boards, epoxy boards yeah. especially. So what a lot of people like to be able to see is the depth on these. So some people will actually try to leave as much of this in as possible. Now anything that will break by hand, I'd break it out. Okay. And take an air, honestly an air compressor to it and get all the dust and stuff out of there. But most of it, if you want to see that depth and that really cool jagged shape, I'd almost do a darker color at the back with maybe a thin layer of clear at the top okay. to give it depth. Okay. I try, I try to do that as much as I can when it has this cool stuff going on. Now, if it's a fairly standard live edge, just, if it's just like this, yeah. I would just pour it all the way out. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's unfortunately the problem you tend to see when you just fill it all the way up with epoxy. All you see is just this outline, Yeah. especially if it's a solid color. Now, if it's like a like a, tran like a tinted gray, yeah, like tinted you know, gray. Yeah. you showed me, that kind of thing you can still see through into yeah, it. Yeah, see through it. And that's a lot less yeah. risky than the Yeah, that's what I like this character. If you pour like a tinted gray or like mm -hmm. blue or something, it looks really good. Yeah. And this one was actually struck by lightning, which is why it's black. Oh, nice. So it's actually been burned out. Um, I have another piece I can show you. It's pretty cool. It's actually, it's a pecan burl that was Ooh. hit by lightning. And it's just got, it looks like actual, um, like, like the lightning actually hit it. It's oh. like a, a charring, perfect charring where it actually is raised. It's really cool looking. Um, but yeah, I personally would just take an air compressor to it, maybe yeah. lightly go in with your hand and break things off that you know are just going to break off when you yeah. pour the epoxy. Other than that, I would leave it alone. Yeah. Unless you don't care, you see all that inside stuff. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's personally one of my favorite parts about it. Yeah. I think especially with this wood, I like uh, how it looks inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think you're, I think you're honestly, your tinted gray would probably look good. Really yeah, tinted gray. And if you uh, put some LED lights in the back, it looks like oh, really good. Awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Now you're talking. Yeah. See, this is why I like having people out here because they can they can share their ideas. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying not to steal from you. And a lot of uh, people think like when you join like two boards and when there's a lot of bark, eventually like uh, the table will break or something, right? Yeah. So if it's actually bark, so a lot of it's the adhesion part of it. So yeah. if it was the bark, let's just say on the outside edge out here and you left that on there, Walnut bark especially tends to just break off, so you could actually walk up there typically mm. and just pull it off. Like a, even the log I have over here, I could 
pretty much get a pry bar on there and just pop it all off. Oh, okay. So you definitely don't want to leave bark on. Now, yeah. because this is on the interior section yeah. and not like where it's being joined up, you're usually okay, especially if you do clean off the stuff that is going to break. Yeah. Now, you also have a lot of cracks and crevices for the epoxy to get into yeah. to hold better as well. So as long as those are clear of dust and clear of all the little debris stuff, I, I don't see why you'd have an issue. Now, I could be totally wrong. You never know. Yeah, you never know. I personally, from my experience, have not had any issue with this kind of thing. I have, however, with bark. I tried it myself, yeah. and it does not work. Yeah, especially if you're doing for yourself, you can take any risk. Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it still matters, because you still might be spending money you don't want to spend. If you yeah, I know. It later on. But you're right. As far as a custom piece instead, yeah. You definitely don't want to mess with a customer. Yeah. Table. Yeah, because, for example, these are, like, very thin, right? Mm -hmm. I think the epoxy will hold. Yeah, especially considering they're basically floating anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, this one only is attached up here. So, as long as you have the rest of this yeah. holding on, I can't see why the epoxy would break at those pieces. They're basically just going to flood it. Yeah. I mean, it just turns into a filler. I mean, have you ever seen the guys that use glass inside of there? Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of guys will fill it up with glass, glass or rocks yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. This actually helps to fill up yeah. some of the space. If you break it all out, you're spending a lot more money on epoxy yeah. too. Um, so between the look and the, and the money, I'd say personally, I would lose that. Yeah, yeah. And one of the reasons to choose this for me is like it's not like thick. It's like six quarter, right? Yeah, six quarter. So it's good for the headboard. It's not very heavy or very light where it can bend over the time. And for those who don't know what six quarter is, it's one and a half inches thick. Imagine if you're actually messing with quarters. And what's the eight quarter? Eight quarter is two <laughs> inches thick. Uh, but this one, by the time it's flattened, if I had to guess, you're probably sitting in around one and a quarter versus yeah. one and a half. So if you lose about a quarter inch, it also saves your weight. Too. Yeah. Um, which, guys, if you're buying slabs, never assume they're flat. Always assume yeah. you're going to have to flatten them. How did you like the video? If you like the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want me to do more videos like this, please let me know in comments.